I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be talking about cyber security as a socio-technical issue and discussing why technical solutions on their own can never solve the cyber security problem. Some people, especially engineers, think that we can solve the security problem by better technology. And there's an area of computer science and software engineering, computer security and security engineering, which addresses these issues of technical improvements to the security of our systems. And certainly, there's a lot we can do. Better programming techniques can reduce vulnerabilities in code. We can add more checks to code. Again, reducing vulnerabilities and so the number of incidents that occur. However, we have to be aware that this can significantly increase the cost of software development and increase the time required to bring software to market. And this is not acceptable for many companies. Their business relies on rapid software delivery. And if that slows down, they may lose market to a competitor. This is the cover of a book, of a book called Secrets and Lies by Bruce Schneier, who's one of the foremost commentators on cybersecurity. It's an excellent book. And I really recommend it as an introduction to the topic. Schneier makes the key point, if you think technology can solve your problems, then you don't understand the problems and you don't understand the technology. Essentially, what he's saying there is that you don't under, if, if, if you believe that there is a technological solution, then you don't really understand the limits of the technology and its practical application. He makes the point that security is only as strong as the weakest link in a chain. And the security chain does not just include technology, but includes people and organizations. And what we find is that the people particularly are often the weakest link in the chain. For sure, better technology is necessary, but on its own, it certainly cannot solve the cybersecurity problem. We need to look at cybersecurity as a socio-technical problem. There's a number of reasons why technology is not enough. Firstly, we can never be sure that our technology is free of bugs and mistakes. There may always be vulnerabilities that we're not aware of. There may be insider attacks and organizations may make technical security compromises for usability reasons to ensure that customers are not dissatisfied. There can be failures or poorly designed organizational procedures. Human carelessness, something which is part of the normal human life. And social engineering, where an attacker tricks people into giving away information. Let me look at each of these in a wee bit more detail. We can't ever guarantee that a system is free of bugs. If there's complexity in a system, it, we know that irrespective of how much testing we do, irrespective of how much validation and verification technology we use, we can never be sure that we've got every last bug out of the system. And the same is exactly true for security vulnerabilities. We may do as much as we possibly can, but the reality is we cannot guarantee security. Furthermore, Systems now rarely operate in isolation, but interact with many other systems. We may apply very stringent security practices to developing one system, let's say system A, but it can interact with systems B and C, which may have less stringent security applied to them. Therefore, the vulnerability comes through systems B and C, not through system A. Insider attacks are where someone with legitimate credentials inside an organization attacks a system. Therefore, many of the technological barriers that we can put in place to stop unauthorized access no longer apply. Insiders know about the technological safeguards that have been put in place and have specialist knowledge which allows these to be circumvented and they're they know about how an organization works 
They may, they're therefore in a better position to use social engineering techniques to get information from other users. One of the case studies I've produced is the Marucci water breach, where an insider attacked a SCADA-based control system and caused the spillage of sewage across a region of Australia. I recommend that you have a look at this to understand how this can happen. I've already talked about the, the dilemma between usability and security. Uh, as you make things more secure, they become less usable and companies will make deliberate decisions to improve the usability of their system in, all, in order to gather and to attract and to maintain customers rather than to put them off with strong security procedures which slows down their interaction. They know perfectly well that this is less secure but they're willing to accept the costs because they believe that it's, it's cost effective to get more users rather than to have more stringent security procedures. So for example uh, a company may make a deliberate decision to use the relatively weak login password authentication system rather than say biometrics based on a, a fingerprint or an iris print because these biometrics need specialist equipment and people don't like to have this kind of equipment around their house. Organisations have got security procedures but sometimes these security procedures are inadequate or poorly designed. These may themselves introduce vulnerabilities into the system, especially when users have to find ways around these procedures in order to do what they want to do with the computer system. Here's a couple of examples of poor password procedures. The requirement for a strong password, the notion that a password isn't a, a simple word that's easy to guess, Many companies now have such a requirement and they give examples which are random strings of characters. These are impossible to remember. And if people follow these examples, they have to write their passwords down. In my video on improving cybersecurity, I talk about a, an easier to remember way of producing strong passwords. Another particularly infuriating requirement in a security procedure which we're all familiar with is where Systems demand that you change passwords regularly. You very quickly run out of rememberable passwords and again you have to write them down. This is a security procedure that's thought to be effective but it has quite the opposite effect. Carelessness is part of the human condition. We do things, we get distracted, we think about other things and we make mistakes. It's not something we can ever eliminate. So carelessness from a security perspective might involve people leaving their computer logged on so that an unauthorized person can get access to the system. It might mean using authentication in a public place where they can be observed. It might mean losing keys. Lots of examples of carelessness. There are some technological safeguards here. For example, automatically logging people out if there's been a period of inaction. But many of these, these safe safeguards are quite expensive and sometimes infuriating. In reality, we cannot technically compensate for human carelessness. Social engineering, as I've said, is where an attacker tricks an authorised user into giving away information. And there have been various studies which have shown that many people are remarkably unsuspicious when approached and asked for such confidential information. Part of this is due to the attitudes to authority which exist in organisations. Let's say an attacker, Alec, pretends to be a, a senior manager in a company and he calls the system administrator Bob and asks for his password to be reset. The company has a password reset procedure, but the manager claims that he hasn't time for this, he's forgotten to do it, and could Bob please simply reset his password? Bob's then put in a difficult position. Does he say no, follow the procedure, thus defying his superior manager? Or does he agree to do it? In many cases, he would agree to do so. He resets the password, and Alec asks Bob to tell him the new password. Again, there may be a, a procedure to stop this happening, but Alec insists and Bob complies. Alec gets the new password, 
can lock out the legitimate manager and has access to the system. So these are all vulnerabilities, social vulnerabilities, and they can be used together by an attacker to gain access to a system. <clears throat> social engineering might be required to convince an administrator to reset a password. But if there's a poor password change procedure where this is not validated with the, by sending a text or an email to the actual user, then this gets around that and the attacker gets access. If you're going to have password change, you also need to have password validation. And that's usually best by using a different channel, such as a text message. In summary then, cybersecurity is a socio-technical problem. We need to think of the whole socio-technical chain if we want to improve the security of our systems. Technology can't guarantee cybersecurity because we can't guarantee that it's reliable. There's always the possibility of insider attacks. We may deliberately weaken security to improve usability. We may have poorly designed organisational procedures or procedures which don't work in practice. People will always be careless and there's always a susceptibility to social engineering where information is gained by an attacker. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.